Here is an example where we want to build a state machine for a detector. The detector is defined as follows. It should give a 1 as an output if and only if the last four input bit matches 0, 0, 1, 1. Otherwise, it should give a 0 as an output. So, for example, if we have the input sequence that after some time will get the sequence 0, 0, 1, 1, then we should output a 1. After that, we should output a zeros until we see this sequence again, and then we will output a 1. So here we can think about what is the input set, what is the state set, what is the output set, and then we also need to define what is the state transition function and the output function for this detector. The input set here is quite clear. It consists of zeros and ones. The output set is also quite clear. It consists of zeros and ones. What we need to think a little bit about is the state set. So what are the different states? What do we need to remember in order to uh, correctly output a one when we need to output the one? Well, we can define a first state that we call S0 and then we say that this state means that we have nothing that is correct. So we are, we are looking for a zero, but we haven't found it yet. While S1, here we can start remember that we have seen the first bit in our sequence. So we have received something and then we received a zero. S2 will be our memory representing that now we have seen not only a zero, but we have seen zero, zero. And S3, in a similar way, we remember that now we have seen zero, zero, one. And now you could think that maybe you want the S4 state, say, seeing that you have received zero, zero, one, one. But this is actually not the case because after we have received one more input bit when we are in state S3, we will either go back to state S0 if we have received a one or we go to S1 if we have received a zero. So actually we only need four states in order to solve this problem. So this is our state set. Now the next thing that we want to do is, is to define our state transition function delta and our output function lambda. And we will do that by drawing our state transition graph. After defining our state in the way we did, it is quite straightforward to draw the state transition graph. So we define that we had four states, so we call them S0, S1, S2 and S3. And now remember that what we want to do is that we want to detect the sequence 0, 0, 1, 1. So when we are in state S0, it means that we have not found the first zero that we're looking for. So when we receive a zero here, we will go to state S1, still outputting a zero. If we have a one, we are still looking for our first zero. So that concludes what we need to do when we are in state S0. So when we are in state S1, it means that we have found one zero. And now if we find another zero in the sequence, we will go to state S2. If we have a one when we are in state S1, we need to go back to state S0. Going further to state S2, if we here receive a zero, it means that we have now received three zeros in a row. So from state S0 to state S2, we uh, have received two zeros and then we receive another zero. So here we stay in state S2 because we know that the two previous bits that we have observed are zeros. If we here observe a one, well, it means that we are well on the way on the sequence that we are looking for and we haven't found it yet, so we output a zero. So now we are in state S3. If we here receive a zero, it means that we have received our first zero that we are looking for, so we are breaking the sequence that we found. So in an, as an example, we here would get this 
0010 sequence, which means that now we have, well, we didn't find the sequence that we were looking for, but at least we found the first zero that we're looking for. So now we go back to state S1, and here we have zero and output zero. On the other hand, if we are in state S3 and we observe a one, it means that we go back to state S0, but we have found what we are looking for, so we will output our one. And this concludes the state transition graph for this problem. So for each of the states that we have defined, we have said what happens if we have a zero as an input, so both what is the output and what is the next state, and if we have a one as input, what is the next state and what is the output.